Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today we're going to be talking about porting a Mazda rotary engine. I'll be explaining what it is and kind of the pros and cons of porting your engine. So first let's talk about a port. If you guys haven't seen uh, my video about all the parts of the rotary engine, I would highly recommend checking that out. But if you already are familiar with it, right here is an inlet port uh, for the combustion chamber of the rotary engine. This is where your air and fuel will come in to the combustion chamber. Porting is making this area bigger, making the hole bigger. To really grasp the concept, think about it like if you're really thirsty and you want, you want the most water you can get. This is the standard port. And this is a bridge port. See, the difference is the amount of flow that will come into the engine. The inlet port is, and the exhaust port is on this. Now, the exhaust port doesn't matter as much as uh, the inlet port, but if you are porting the inlet, you have to port the exhaust or else the engine won't be able to handle it. But this is less precise really because you're just getting the exhaust out. So there are a few different ports that you can do when porting your rotary engine. The first one is obviously not porting it at all which is just keeping the stock port which is just this little shape. It's about yay big? I don't know. This keeps the fuel economy stock obviously but it keeps the amount of power that you can make with the engine relatively low. About 180 horsepower with bolt-ons. The first thing you can do is a mild port which just makes it slightly larger. Uh, so you just, you would take a tool and you would cut this hole just a little bit larger. What that does is it increases the flow into the combustion chamber, but not too much to where you will need a new exhaust and intake. It just kind of opens it up and lets it breathe a little bit more. The extended port, again, lets more air and fuel into the engine, but you might want to run uh, a different exhaust and a different intake to help keep up with that flow, or else you might fuel starve your engine or other problems like that. Those two ports are the most streetable ports, and when people talk about a street port, they usually mean one of those two, which means they can still daily drive the car without huge hits to the fuel economy but making more power. Now we get on to the bridge port which like the extended port cuts around but also cuts a secondary port to let even more air and fuel in and there will be a little piece of metal left but there will be another hole right around here which is why it's called a bridge port because there's that little metal piece in the middle to make sure that the engine still is strong. This you will need a different intake and a different exhaust to handle how much air and fuel is coming through the engine. And with all of these you're going to need to change the exhaust port. The good thing about this is that you will make a lot more power off of bridge port and if you guys have ever seen videos of cars with bridge ported engines, they sound mean. They sound awesome. thing is is that you're probably not going to want to daily drive a bridge port. I'm not saying it's not possible, I'm not saying people don't do it, but it's loud, it gets terrible fuel economy, but you do have that pretty good increase in naturally aspirated power. This will also increase your RPMs. A bridge ported engine might max out at around 10,000 RPM as opposed to the 7,000 RPM of the stock port. And the last one I believe is called a peripheral port. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It'll be down at the bottom. Um, but that is where you actually cut out all the uh, porting. You actually cut this hole way larger. You have to get an attachment that's just, it basically looks like a PVC pipe that feeds your engine. And that is insane. That is for racing. Um, and that's if you want to make 300 plus horsepower off a naturally aspirated rotary engine. giant port you'll be getting your maximum power well after 8,000 rpm you will need a whole new exhaust possibly even a custom exhaust and intake and it's really only for racing engines so if you plan on really racing your rotary engine you can go with that kind of port um, but if you just want to make monster power I would recommend a slightly smaller port 
uh, if not a bridge port, uh, even a street port. And like I said, with all this porting, obviously as the sizes get larger, you're going to want to cut your exhaust port to be larger as well to really fit the requirements of all that power that's going through your engine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. And if you have any questions about porting an engine, please leave it down in the comment section below. Take care, guys.